Pastors. My name is Jeff Hampton, one of the associate pastors here, and it's good to be with you all today, along with Reverend Clark. I would like to invite all of our members and guests to please complete your Connect card, and you can detach it from your bulletin and place it in offering uh, baskets. And also, I would like to uh, re remind you all of this current sermon series, Lies We Tell About God, and today is the third sermon in that series, God Wants to Be uh, Number One. And you can read more about that uh, in your tower. This time I invite Reverend Clark to come forward and lead us in our call to worship. Let's stand for our call to worship. You are the salt of the earth. May we season the world with faithfulness, O oh God. You are the light of the world. May your love shine through us, O oh Christ our Savior. You are a city built on a hill. May, May your vigor, vigor make us bold witnesses, witness. O oh Spirit of the only living God. Now let's pass the peace of Christ to those around us. I invite you to remain standing as you are um, around your tables or anywhere else in the room that you feel. Before we worship God, let's put our hands together. Our banner high, we lift the name. We lift our banner. 
Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we're so thankful that you bless our lives with so many gifts. We ask that you be with us now. May we feel your spirit move through this place. Open our hearts and our minds to be receptive of your word today. That may it grow inside of us that we may live out your love in this world. Spirit of the living God, we ask that you move with us. Amen. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to more and more. We're hanging on every word. Speak to us, O oh Lord, Spirit of the Living God, Spirit of the Living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word, Spirit of the Living God. Spirit of the living God, we want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Just when you speak and when you move, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see and what we seek when you come. It changes what we see and what we see. Changes us, it changes what we see and what 
tears when you move you move all our fears and when you move you move us to tears and when we fall we fall on our knees and when we fall we fall invite the children forward for our time with young Christians. Don't be scared. Come on up, all ye children. We're going to take a field trip if that piques your interest a little. Don't get too comfy. Come on up. How's everybody doing? Good. So I have some questions. Why do we come to church? Learn about God? And listen to God? Yes. What else? Why do we come to church? So you can slide down the staircase? No? <laughs> So you can eat donuts? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Why else? So I guess what I'm asking is, is this hour that you're here just boring? No. Why? Because God and Jesus love you? Let's take a little field trip. Everybody get up. So this is our altar table, okay? You, you know what the altar table's for? Okay, it kind of represents uh, tradition's old uh, thing of having some place that, that physically represents God in the sanctuary, right? Okay, we put our offerings on it because that's what you do on an altar table. But it also turns into the Lord's table on Communion Sunday because you'll remember we have the, the bread and the juice up here. And so it's like a table that's set. So it serves two different purposes. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, traveling music, please. Thank you, Trent. And so um, some of you have been baptized. Some of you haven't. But, you know, the baptismal font's over here, right? And that's an important part. You've seen kids, little babies be baptized. And sometimes you even see adults get baptized. But there's a little water in there. So as you're walking by, touch the water. Come with me. We have candles on each side, you know, and it's, for some people it's very, very meaningful to light a candle as they pray for someone. And so there are times in the service where you may light a candle. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking what I'm thinking, fire. <laughs> but you put it out in the sand. So if you light a candle and you, your parents may want to help you, 
then you light the candle. And instead of sticking it back in with all the other little uh, pieces of, of matches over here, you put it in the sand so it goes out, right? And then you can remember those people. Traveling music, Trenton. That's a change. Back here, in case you forget your Bibles, which many United Methodists do, we have Bibles back here that if you want to read along uh, and like find the scripture that we're using, like today it's from Philippians, which is, um, you know, Paul wrote that, the Apostle Paul, so you know it's in the back, but you can find it in here and read along with whoever, whoever is reading the scripture, okay? Because that's important too. What else in here is different than, say, at school? Well, your teacher's not here. What else? Being good to God? You're not good to God in, in school? We need to have a talk. There's big screens, that's right. So we sing churchy songs, right? About our love of Jesus and our love of God, right? And then there's, there's the big cross hanging up there on the stage. Yeah? So when you come to worship... Um, it's about figuring out those things that you can really focus on. Because I'm going to tell you a secret. Can everybody gather around? Sometimes worship can be boring. And don't let any adult deny that either. Because they think that sometimes. But the key to worship at, at your age, and even at my age, is finding that one thing that you really look forward to every week. Maybe it's singing the songs. Maybe it's listening to the sermon. And it may be that a scripture that we're studying that day really speaks to you. It may be, and don't think that's not God because it is. If, if you hear something that really piques your interest, that makes you excited, it may be God tapping you on the shoulder and saying, hey, you need to listen to this, right? Because that happens in church. Because the whole goal is for us to get recharged from worshiping God so that when we go out to school, to be with our families, our friends, even to work, that we take that peace that we've gotten from God and we share it with the world. Does that make sense? All right, so try to do that this week, okay? Share God with the world. And we do that through loving each other, okay? Will you pray with me? God, we're so thankful for this time that we get to come and worship you. In this room or outside of this room, we know we can worship you anywhere, but it makes it special when we're all together. Help us to take your word into the world so that we can love others as you love us. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mr. Chip is back here somewhere to to uh, take you to Wesley Kids if you're part of Wesley Kids. Okay, so make sure you have a parent check out. All right, have a great week, boys and girls. We're reading from Philippians 2, 1 through 11. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort in love, any sharing in the Spirit, any sympathy. Complete my joy by thinking the same way, having the same love, being united, and agreeing with each other. Don't do anything for selfish purposes, but with humility, think of others as better than yourselves. Instead of each person watching out for their own good, watch out for what is better for others. Adopt the attitude that was in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, he did not consider being equal with God something to exploit. But he emptied himself by taking the form of a slave and by becoming like a human being. When he found himself in the form of a human, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly honored him and gave him a name above all names, so that at the name of Jesus, everyone in heaven, on earth, and under might bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God, the Father, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated.
Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, continue to bless us with compassion and humility. In the name of our Lord Jesus, amen. Uh, today we continue our sermon series, Lies We Tell About God. And our sermon title is God Wants to Be Number One. In the book, Lies We Believe About God, by Paul Young, who you may also remember as the author of The Shack, says that God does not want to be number one in your life, but rather God wants to be central to your life. God does not want to be uh, the first person on your list in name only, but God wants to be at the center of your being. And as Christian people, we have a choice of serving God only a few hours each week, or we can place God at the center of our being in a mutual, loving relationship that benefits all creation. Our text today from the book of Philippians 2, 1 through 11, which was just read by Robert, uh, was written by the Apostle Paul from his prison cell in Rome. Paul was awaiting trial and facing an uncertain future because of his Christian beliefs. He loved the church at Philippi, and they loved and supported his ministry wholeheartedly. Can you picture Timothy arriving to worship at Philippi, uh, informing the congregation that Paul is in jail, and then reading this letter which is jubilant, joyful, and optimistic. But at the same time, the letter warns them against becoming inward focused and reminds them to always imitate Christ, which would make Paul's joy, he says, complete. One Bible verse to summarize the Apostle Paul would be uh, Philippians 1, verse 21. For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. So Paul asked the church of Philippi to do three things, and the same may apply for us today. First, Christians are to be of the same mind and love as Jesus. Secondly, we are called to put away our selfish ambition or pride and with humility regard others better than ourselves. And lastly, we are called to be humble, obedient servants. Paul says that Christians follow and imitate the example of Christ because Christ loved us so much that he emptied himself and died upon a cross for the sins of the whole world. By imitating Christ in these three ways, we will have strength and joy through whatever obstacles we encounter. And God will not be number one in our life, but God will be central to our being. The first thing Christians may do to imitate Christ is to have the same mind and love. Christians are called to imitate Jesus by going the extra mile for others, and it can be difficult but doable. And at times, it is difficult for us to hear certain scriptures. For example, uh, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, starting at verse 15, selected verse, so the last will be first, and the first will be last. Read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, starting at 27, selected verses. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Do to others as you would have them do to you. But love your enemies, do good, lend, expecting nothing in return. Be merciful, just as your father is merciful. 
Having the same mind and love of Christ is not easy, but it is doable because we are members of the same body, one with each other, reaching out through the power of the Holy Spirit with God at the center of our being. In the Greek world, secondly, excuse me, I lost my place just a minute. Secondly, Paul says that we can imitate Christ by putting away our selfish ambition or pride and with humility regarding others as better than ourselves. And Paul recommends that we intentionally put the needs of others ahead of our own. In the Greek world of Paul's day, being humble was looked down upon and considered to be a sign of weakness, while selfish ambition or pride ruled the day. Paul was not discouraging healthy ambition. Healthy ambition is good, but Paul was against selfish ambition and pride that destroyed others at any cost. Christians are not called to be humble doormats, letting other people walk all over us, or, nor are we called to be nosy busybodies, always prying into the business of our neighbors. But being humble like Christ means that we are lovingly care about the genuine needs of our neighbors. Serving instead of being served, giving instead of taking, listening instead of dominating, when we imitate Christ, at every, we imitate Christ at every opportunity with the checkout person when buying goods or receiving services, coworkers, friends, or each person we encounter throughout the day. Only by the power of the Holy Spirit may we be transformed into the humble likeness of Christ. Humility that regards others as being better than ourselves ensures that God is at the center of our being. Paul's third recommendation is to imitate Christ, was to imitate Christ by being humble, obedient servants. Jesus was the son of God, yet he did not consider equality with God as something to be taken advantage of. Rather, Jesus was humble. He emptied himself. Jesus became human, taking the form of a slave or servant. If God is going to be central to our being, this is at the heart of what it means to be emptied of selfishness and to be filled with Christ and his presence for others. The greatest among you will be your servant. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Therefore, humble yourselves like this child and you will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Those scriptures from John and Matthew. Jesus humbled himself and became an obedient servant to the point of a shameful death on a cross. The early church did not view the cross the way we view the cross today. They did not wear crosses around their necks fingers, ears, or body tattoos. The cross was a symbol of shame, but our Lord Jesus transformed this shameful cross symbol into a cross symbol of unconditional love, grace, and mercy. The cross is now a symbol of God at the center of our lives. Finally, in verses 9 through 11, and the reason I got lost, I have my scriptures up here. This is an extra stack. 
It needs to be up here, though. <laughs> Finally, in verses 9 through 11, are the words from a hymn which was sung by the early church. And many theologians believe that this is one of the most important passages in the Bible to defend and explain that Jesus Christ is truly God. God exalts Jesus by giving to him the name that is above every name. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, meaning God is salvation. Paul is declaring the divinity of Jesus when he says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess him as Lord. The phrase, every knee shall bow, can be found in Isaiah 45, 23, which reads, <clears throat> By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone forth in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. The Gospel of John helps us to understand and connect this scripture from Isaiah 45, 23 with our Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel of John chapter 1 verses 1 through 4, selected verses then starting at 14 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Matthew 16, 16, Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. This truth is the very foundation of the Christian church. The bottom line is that Jesus is Lord and that Jesus has been present with God always. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess allegiance to God. Early in this message, I said, Christians are called to imitate our Lord Jesus by going the extra mile for others, and it can be difficult but doable. We all recently witnessed humanity at its best during the hurricanes of Harvey, Irma, Marie, and Nate, and during the constant fires out west. We witnessed angels during the mass shooting in Las Vegas, saving lives and giving their lives for others. We see among us today people imitating Christ by working with the homeless, the jobless, advocates for those in prison, advocates for those in need of a forever family, and those fighting for the environment. We have police officers, firefighters, EMTs, first responders, dedicated company employees, Farmers feeding the world, Methodists, Baptists, Presbyterians, Lutherans, Catholics, etc. The young and seniors all imitating our Lord Jesus Christ to the glory of God. So Paul was asking the church at Philippi, and he's speaking to the Christians today also, to make his joy complete by doing three things. Be of the same mind and love. Put away our selfish ambition or pride and with humility regard others better than ourselves. And lastly, to be humble, obedient servants. And if we do this, whatever obstacles we encounter, God will be not number one, but God will be at the center of our being. Thanks be to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Bless our conflict, O God, of knowing your will, but turning a blind eye. 
Bless our yearning to follow your will, but always knowing that we can do better. As the season continues to change in our own country, we ask for your many blessings to be felt not only here but around the world. Bless the grief. Bless the caring. Continue to bless the victims and families of the shooting in Las Vegas. And let your presence be felt to all who are grieving senseless violence. Bless the dead after a stampede on a footbridge in Mumbai, India. Bless children and teachers lost when a daycare center in Brazil was set fire by a guard who worked there. Bless the West Coast as your creation, both land and people, are consumed by the spread of wildfire. Bless the troubled, bless the injured, bless the memories of all survivors. Bless the leaving, bless the turning. Bless the devastated U.S. territory of Puerto Rico. Bless the hope, bless the rebuilding, bless the new homes, and someday bless those who are returning. Bless the danger, bless the healing, the hungry and the hurting. Bless the fear feel filled, bless the aid workers and donors and researchers and even bless the prayer supporters. Within our own community of faith, our Christian sympathy is extended to J.R. Nash and family in the death of Diana K. Nash, to Stacy Carr and family in the death of her grandfather, Troy Mousy. Those hospitalized recently include Edwin Alderson, John Alston, Irene Apple, Brenda Collier, Laurice Dollar, Alan Finney, Jenny Garner, Clarinda Hall, Holden Hoskin, Betty Malone, and Dee Williams. We rejoice in the birth of Nora Grace Gatton, the child of Allison and Ryan Gatton, and the grandchild of Stacy Sells and Tim Gauger, and Lee and Christy Pittman. Bless the birthdays and new lovers and years-long friendships, sunsets and rainbows of achievements large and small. Bless the learners and the doers. Bless the meals eaten, alone and those together. Bless each hour of rest and slumber. Bless the hands and hearts and spirits, O oh God. Bless us all in the name of the one who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As our ushers come forward to receive our morning offering, we ask God to bless these gifts that we offer back to God because God gives each of us so much. Amen.
United Methodist Church and you can start that process by coming forward as we sing. Our next Membership Matters class will be November the 5th from 12 to 2 p.m. and child care is provided and for our first time visitors there will be a gift for you at each exit. Let us all sing together. Blessed be your name land that is plentiful where streams of abundance flow blessed be your name blessed be your name when i'm found in the desert place though i walk through the wilderness blessed be your name Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your 
your name when the sun's shining down on me when the world's all as it should be blessed be your name blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering though there's pain in the offering blessed be your name every blessing every blessing you pour out I'll turn back to praise and when the darkness closes in Lord still I would say blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your glory you give yourself away you give yourself away my heart will choose to say lord blessed be your name you give yourself away lord you give yourself away my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. I want to introduce you to Amy and Chris Benton and their children, Paige and Aiden and Asher and Piper. And uh, Chris and Amy uh, come from transfer of membership uh, to this church today. Uh, Paige and Aiden will complete confirmation, and then the kids will, they'll all join at that time too. So I ask you all, uh, you two especially, uh, will you be loyal to Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And if so, you will answer, I will. And we have a response too, if you'll join me. Uh, hang on. There, well, I'll say this litany so we can be formal about it. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And now we have our response. As members together with you in the body of Christ and of Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant, faithfully participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. I know you'll want to come and welcome them uh, to this, uh, this part of the fold of God's church uh, after the service is over. Dr. Hampton? Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to New Heights and Plaska Heights United Methodist Church. Just a few announcements. Um, immediately following the 11 a.m. service, there will be a lunch here in Wesley Hall. That's why you have the round tables today. We hope that you will come back. Today at 2 o'clock in the parlor, a grief and loss support group will, will begin. You're welcome to come to that. And then the interfaith dinner and conversation will be Wednesday, October the 18th at 5.30 in Wesley Hall. Jewish, Christian, and Islamic faiths will talk about their faith followed by conversation. So we hope you will take advantage of these opportunities. Go forth now, uh, imitating our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the day.